So far, we have an operation that takes two vectors and produces a new vector, and that's addition. So we can add two vectors together and get a third vector. And we have an operation that takes a number and a vector and produces a vector. This is multiplying a vector by a number, which gives another vector. In this video, I want to talk about a new operation that takes two vectors and produces a number. And this is called the inner product. And the inner product of two vectors, a and b, is denoted like this. So the vector b, we use the same notation as usual, and then we flip the a around and sandwich it up against the b. Now the inner product has to satisfy three properties. The first is conjugate symmetry, which says that the inner product of a and b has to be equal to the complex conjugate of the inner product of b and a. Just a quick refresher on complex conjugates. The complex conjugate of a real number is just that same number. So the complex conjugate of the real number a is equal to a. The complex conjugate of an imaginary number is just the negative of that imaginary number. So the complex conjugate of ai is negative ai. And then finally, the complex conjugate of a general complex number, let's say a plus bi, is just equal to the real part of that complex number minus the imaginary part of that complex number. So the complex conjugate of a plus bi is a minus bi. So in general, the inner product of a and b is not equal to the inner product of b and a, unless of course, the inner product of a and b is a real number, in which case its complex conjugate is itself. So in that case, these two inner products are the same. The second property that the inner product has to have is linearity. So let's say we have some vector that's just a scalar multiple of another vector. Then the inner product of u and this vector is the same thing as the number times the inner product of u and v. And then if we have a vector that's the sum of two other vectors, so let's say v plus w is the sum of the vectors v and w, then the inner product of u and v plus w is the same thing as the inner product of u and v plus the inner product of u and w. So putting these two things together, if we have some vector that's a linear combination of two other vectors, let's say AV plus BW, then taking the inner product of U and AV plus BW is the same thing as multiplying the inner product of U and V by the number A and adding that to the inner product of U and W multiplied by the number B. The final property of the inner product isn't too important to us, but it's pretty straightforward. It just says that the inner product of a vector with itself has to be greater than or equal to zero. And if it happens to be zero, then it means that vector is the zero vector, which is the vector that you get when you multiply any vector by the number zero. So let's try to define an inner product on some vector space that satisfies these properties. I don't want to work with the plane because the plane is defined over the real numbers. So we won't be able to get a better look at this um, property of complex symmetry. So I want to look at a new two-dimensional vector space over the complex numbers. So because it's two-dimensional, its basis consists of two vectors. Let's just call these zero and one. And so this vector space consists of all linear combinations of the vectors zero and one. In this case, the coefficients on front of zero and one can be complex numbers. So an arbitrary vector in this space would be x naught times the vector zero plus x one times the vector one, where x naught and x one are both arbitrary complex numbers. So let's try to define an inner product over this vector space that satisfies these properties. 
Let's start in kind of an obvious way. Let's define the inner product of zero with itself to be one and the inner product of one with itself to also be one. Uh, by the way, this is called normalization. A vector is normalized if its inner product with itself is one. And then let's make the inner product of zero with one equal to zero. And again, another bit of vocabulary. If the inner product of two vectors is zero, then we say that these vectors are orthogonal. If two vectors are both normalized and orthogonal, we say those two vectors are orthonormal. And so the vectors zero and one are orthonormal. We know the inner product of zero and one by definition, and it allows us to figure out the inner product of one and zero. The inner product of one and zero is just the complex conjugate of the inner product of zero and one by the property of conjugate symmetry. And because the inner product of zero and one is a real number, its complex conjugate is itself. So the inner product of one and zero is also zero. Now, it may not seem like we have too much information at this point about how this inner product acts on this space, but we actually have enough to figure out what the inner product is between any two vectors in this vector space. So we already defined one arbitrary vector V, and I just wanted to define another one U to see if we can figure out what the inner product between two arbitrary vectors is. So like V, U is going to be some complex number y0 times the basis vector 0 plus some complex number y1 times the basis vector 1. So y0 and y1 can both have arbitrary, real, and imaginary parts. So let's try to figure out what the inner product between these two arbitrary vectors is. So we can start by using the property of linearity to break up this inner product into two simpler inner products. So we know this is going to be equal to x0 times the inner product of u in the basis vector 0 plus x1 times the inner product of u in the basis vector 1. So we know the inner product of u and 0 is the same thing as the complex conjugate of the inner product of 0 and u. And we can figure out the inner product of zero and u by again using linearity. So it's going to be equal to y naught times the inner product of zero with itself plus y one times the inner product of zero with one. And the inner product of zero with itself is one and the inner product of zero and one is zero. So this whole thing is just y naught. And then taking the complex conjugate, we see that the inner product of u and zero is the complex conjugate of y naught. Now to figure out the inner product of u and one, we're gonna do basically the same thing. So it's gonna be equal to the complex conjugate of one and u, and the inner product of one and u, we can figure out by using the property of linearity. It's going to be equal to y naught times the inner product of one and zero, which is zero plus y1 times the inner product of one with itself, which is one. So the whole thing is just equal to y1. So the inner product of u and one is equal to the complex conjugate of y1. So finally, the inner product of u and v is going to be equal to x naught times the complex conjugate of y naught plus x1 times the complex conjugate of y1. Or, if y naught and y1 are both real numbers, this is just equal to x naught times y naught plus x1 times y1. So provided they're real numbers, we take the coefficients on front of the basis vector zero, multiply them together, and then add that to the coefficients on front of the basis vector one multiplied together. That's how we take the inner product between two arbitrary vectors in this space. And if their coefficients aren't real numbers, they're general complex numbers, then we just take the complex conjugate of one of those coefficients in the pair.